amusement parks are generally looked at as places of happiness and fun. People will join their friends or family members, often while on vacation, for a day of excitement and making memories. But sometimes, the memories made are the worst of a person's life. Anytime a very large group of people end up in the same general area, things can go very wrong. Add in the fact that huge pieces of machinery are moving around at high speeds, and disaster is never that far away. Here are 18 deaths that have occurred at Cedar Fair Park's locations. For this list, I have not included deaths that are mostly unrelated to the amusement parks themselves, such as those caused from pre-existing health conditions or something like drug overdoses, as those types of things can happen anywhere. Headquartered in Sandusky, Ohio, the Cedar Fair Entertainment Company owns and operates 12 amusement parks, two outdoor water parks, one indoor water park, and five hotels throughout the U.S. and Canada. For this list, we'll be looking at incidents that have happened at one of the Cedar Fair locations. Number 1. On May 11, 2003, Canada's Wonderland was packed with people for Mother's Day. Two guests ended up in an altercation at the front gates of the amusement park. According to the York Regional Police, the altercation was over a previous drug deal. One of the individuals involved in the fight brandished a gun, shooting a 21-year-old man in the chest, killing him. Number 2. October 26, 2014 was the scene of another deadly confrontation at Canada's Wonderland. The park was hosting their Halloween haunt event and was reported to have been overcrowded, leading some to speculate this had an impact on the altercation. It is believed two groups of individuals in the park began arguing with each other. As egos convinced both sides to not back down, the arguing spilled over into the parking lot as the park came to a close. Things eventually escalated to the point of two men being stabbed. An 18-year-old man was brought to the hospital in critical condition, but survived. A 21-year-old man was not so lucky, and was pronounced dead at the scene. On November 13, 2014, a separate 18-year-old man was arrested and charged in the stabbings. Number 3. Also at Canada's Wonderland, Guests were celebrating over Victoria Day weekend in 1988. An 18-year-old man from Scarborough, Ontario was playing frisbee in a pond for about 10 minutes before the frisbee was thrown next to a nearby waterfall. When the 18-year-old attempted to retrieve the frisbee, he was pulled underwater by an undertow in the pond. The man's brother tried to help him but also began struggling in the undertow. By the time staff was able to remove the man, they were unable to resuscitate him, and sadly, he passed away. A high diver that had been working for the park for seven years said he had informed his supervisor of the undertow during the previous season, but no official record of this exists, and unfortunately, no action was taken to correct this issue in time. Number 4. On August 13, 2015, at Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio, a 45-year-old man was attempting to retrieve a dropped cell phone near the Raptor, a large roller coaster located at the park. The man entered a restricted area to get the phone. He was struck in the head by a passing train. Emergency crews tried reviving the man shortly after the accident took place, but he was soon pronounced dead. The ride was shut down but reopened the following day after passing inspections. Number 5. The Drop Tower Scream Zone at California's Great America Amusement Park is a drop tower thrill ride. Cars containing four passengers each are brought to the top of the 227-foot tower and drop towards the ground at a top speed of 62 miles per hour. On August 22, 1999, a 12-year-old boy fell from the tower to his death. The boy's family claimed his harness was not fastened correctly, although an investigation was inconclusive and no charges were ever filed. Number 6. On September 7, 1998, 
a man was attempting to retrieve his hat near the flight deck roller coaster at Great America. It is said the man spoke Spanish and was unable to read the park's English warning signs. He therefore entered a restricted area and was struck in the head by a woman's foot who was passing by on the ride. The woman broke her leg in the accident and sadly, the man passed away. Number 7. On July 12, 2007, a four-year-old boy was playing in the wave pool of Great America's Great Barrier Reef. The young boy ended up underwater in the two feet deep wave pool. By the time he was discovered, lifeguards and EMTs attempted to resuscitate the boy, but he was soon pronounced dead from drowning at a local hospital. Number 8. Logger's Run at Great America is a log flume style ride. On July 4th, 1989, two boys intentionally jumped from the ride. One of the boys landed on a safety platform and survived, while the other unfortunately fell to his death. Number 9. The Wizard is the name of a roller coaster at Great America. On March 29, 1980, a 13-year-old boy was killed when two trains collided with each other. Another eight passengers were injured in the accident. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission charged the park for not reporting a possible defect in the ride's braking system. Another 11 incidents happened on this ride between 1976 and 1979, which resulted in an unknown number of injuries. Number 10. On June 16, 1994, at Wildwater Kingdom, a 14-year-old boy from Bronx, New York drowned in the wave pool. The boy was found overnight by a construction worker and was later pronounced dead. The boy was on a field trip to the park with his classmates from Intermediate School 166 in the Bronx. Six adults who were in charge of the field trip were blamed for the incident as they did not verify which students could or could not swim prior to letting them in the park. Also, when the boy was reported missing, the school's vice principal failed to take proper actions. Wildwater Kingdom staff and lifeguards were also blamed for making little effort to find the missing boy. A Bronx Supreme Court jury found both Wildwater Kingdom and the New York City Department of Education negligent, and in 2002, the victim's mother was awarded $10 million from the two. Number 11. The Shockwave at Kings Dominion Park is a stand-up roller coaster that was first opened in 1986. On August 23, 1999, a 20-year-old man from Long Island fell from his safety restraints to his death. After an investigation, it was determined the restraints were working properly and were still intact when the ride returned to the station. Less than one month after the incident, a 13-year-old boy was riding the shockwave. When he became concerned that he was not properly restrained, he intentionally slipped out of the restraints while the train was ascending a hill and jumped to safety on a maintenance catwalk. Number 12. On May 13, 1983, a 17-year-old boy from Delaware, Ohio, was attending a graduation party with his classmates at Kings Island Amusement Park. He was on the Eiffel Tower, which was a replica of the structure in Paris, France with the same name. For an unknown reason, the boy climbed a large fence and onto an emergency stairway, and then climbed into an elevator shaft. He was struck by the elevator's counterweight and became tangled in cables. When the elevator at the bottom of the shaft began to ascend, he fell about 200 feet to his death. Number 13. On June 9, 1991, an extremely intoxicated 32-year-old woman named Candy Taylor from Toledo, Ohio, was riding the Flight Commander roller coaster at Kings Island. She had a blood alcohol content level of 0.30% and fell 60 feet from the ride to her death. Although her intoxicated state played a large factor in her death, an investigation also found that a flaw in the design allowed the restraints to allow a limp passenger to slide into the unoccupied seat next to them. Number 14. 
also on June 9, 1991, and also at Kings Island, another, even deadlier event took place. Two 20-year-old men, park guest William Haithcote and park employee Daryl Robinson entered a shallow pond to help a third man near the Oktoberfest beer garden. Both men trying to help were electrocuted and killed by an underwater circulation pump, and the third man received injuries from the pump. An investigation concluded the pump lacked a ground fault circuit interrupter and fined Kings Island $23,500 for the incident. Number 15. In 1986, at the Royal Fountains at Kings Island, a 26-year-old man dove headfirst into one of the fountains. Unfortunately, the fountain was only two feet deep, and the man was gravely injured. He was rushed to the hospital, but died a week later from his injuries. Number 16. The Calico Railroad at Knott's Berry Farm in Southern California is an authentic steam locomotive dating back to the beginning of the 20th century and had been in operation at the park since 1952. On October 20th, 1996, at about 6 p.m., the park was closing for an hour before they reopened for their Halloween-themed event. An employee at the park who had been operating the train for three years somehow became trapped between two cars and was crushed, killing him. It was the first death at the theme park, which had been operating for 76 years at that point. Number 17. Also located at Knott's Berry Farm, the Perilous Plunge is a shoot the chutes style ride, consisting of a flat bottom boat that slides down a ramp and into a lagoon. On September 21, 2001, a 40 year old woman fell out of the boat as it began its downward plunge. She sustained multiple blunt force trauma injuries, ending her life. The California Division of Occupational Health and Safety said the woman somehow came out of the ride's restraint system and fell to the base of the structure. Officials don't seem to be positive how this happened, as when the boat returned to the station, the seatbelt and lap bar were both still engaged. Number 18. The last entry on this list takes place on the Timberwolf Roller Coaster at Worlds of Fun Amusement Park in Kansas City, Missouri. On June 30th, 1995, a 14-year-old girl fell 25 feet from the ride, killing her. The park owner, Hunt Midwest, and the ride manufacturer, the Din Corporation, had claimed that the accident was the result of the 14-year-old attempting to switch seats in the middle of the ride, although the girl's family denied this. The ride closed for a period of time while the accident was investigated. The Timberwolf eventually reopened, with new lap bars installed. The family of the girl sued Hunt Midwest and the Din Corporation, who settled with the family in the amount of $200,000. With the beginning of the new year here, springtime will be following shortly after. These coming warmer months, I do encourage everyone to spend time with loved ones and have fun, whatever that may look like for you. I believe people should live their lives and not spend their time hiding in fear. But there are some important things to keep in mind. Even in more dangerous situations, a bit of harm prevention is usually enough to keep us safe. Of course, there are situations where people end up in the wrong place and time, or another individual causes something bad to happen. But more often than not, a little awareness and safety will be enough to avoid disaster. If you find yourself at an amusement park or similar attraction in the future, try to be smart. Be aware of your surroundings and do your best to stay out of areas that are unsafe. Realize that you can't always trust ride operators to ensure your safety 100% of the time, as human error is something that happens. Always check for yourself that the safety equipment on rides appears to be in place properly, and don't be shy to speak up if something looks off and always follow the rules for each ride. Trying to get an extra thrill out of a ride isn't worth gravely injuring yourself or others. That being said, good luck, have fun, and thanks for watching.